afternoon and good evening from wherever you are connecting from. Welcome to the 2021 Messengers of Peace Heroes Award. My name is Pauline Kagiri and I'm from Kenya. And my name is Muadhan Jafan and I'm from Saudi Arabia and we will be your host during this award ceremony. This year, World Scouting is recognizing 25 young people for their outstanding service and contribution toward building peace and promoting sustainable developments in their communities. This is a very special occasion, also because Scouting flagship initiative, Messenger of Peace, is celebrating 10 years of impact around the world. Since 2010, the Messengers of Peace initiative has involved nearly all 172 national scouts organizations and empowered scouts to lead more than 16 million community development projects, delivering over 2.5 billion hours of service towards the sustainable development goals. We are here today to celebrate 2020-2021 MOP heroes for their ad services and actions across five categories related to the sustainable development goals in environmental, peace building, life skills, health and well being, and COVID 19 responses. During this ceremony, you will hear from many of the heroes. Some of will tell us their stories, and many will participate in two panels where we'll hear from their experiences. We also have some special guests joining us today. All right, let's get this celebration started. And the best way to start this is to welcome our virtual stage, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Guillaume of Luxembourg. He have a message to us all. For 10 years, the Messengers of Peace Initiative has enabled young people to take actions in their communities, contribute to sustainable development, and most importantly, foster a culture of peace and dialogue. Scouting is about meeting other young and engaged scouts from around the world, with the sole purpose to make our world a better and more humane place to be for all. It is cross cultures, borders and religions, getting to know and respecting others in their differences. In the last 10 years, Messengers of Peace has made immeasurable progress. It has involved nearly all 172 National Scouts organizations and empowered Scouts to lead around 16 million projects, delivering over 2.5 billion hours of community service. Their actions tackle relevant local issues, everything from responding to natural disasters and leading local peace-building activities to standing up for the gender equality and driving meaningful progress towards delivering the Sustainable Development Goals. Today marks the 10 years of impact and peace-building efforts by young people. It is a moment to celebrate all our heroes who committed to promoting a culture of peace and worked to resolve issues in their local communities. I want to take this opportunity to extend my sincere congratulations to the 25 Messengers of Peace heroes being recognized this year. You have worked hand in hand with your communities to bring about positive change and impact. You have impacted the lives of millions of beneficiaries through your projects and community actions and the numbers are continuing to grow. And I would like to encourage you to continue inspiring young, young people to follow you in your footsteps to create a more peaceful and sustainable world. Thank you very much to His Royal Highness for these words. Now it's time to hear from our heroes. Raymond and his group partnered with uh, ways for water to provide access to clean water and uh, to clean and safe water to marginalized indigenous communities to reduce waterborne disease. They have succeeded in providing over 50 families with clean drinkable water in three municipals of the Philippines. Let's take a look at this story. Uh, 
everyone. I'm Raymond Romeo C. Guzman Jr. from Cagayan, North Tigero City Council, Northeastern Zone Region, Philippines. And hereby, I present to you my project. In remote areas with no improved water resources, women and children spend up to more than 200 million hours every day in collecting water. In line with this, I had an awakening that I learned to recognize the truth, and I believe that an idea cannot compensate for a society that does not guarantee equal access for all. Our potential for nation-building leaders affects good change in many ways, whether large or small, and it improves the living standards of those who do not have much. That is how and why the Danun Project came to be. It was a concept that it came to my mind and it made me think about how important it is for remote areas to have drinkable and safe water on a daily basis, advocating sustainable development goals number six, which is clean water and sanitation. Implementing the project in the pandemic is hard. As you can see from the documentation, we have to consider factors that would affect implementation and the funding channels. But with God's guidance, in partnership with organizations with Sir Waters Philippines and other government and non-government organizations, we strive to provide clean water access to the marginalized, especially to the remote areas of Santa Ana, Gataran, Claveria, and Cagayan here in the Philippines. The filtration facility system of project partner Razor Waters Philippines has a high filtration rate at 0.01 micron that can catch bacteria and protozoa. Through this filtration system that we implemented, we are assisting them to develop a long-term water facility that will enable the Eta communities in Cagayan to meet the following goals. Reduce the number of children infected with bacteria that causes cholera, botulism, typhoid, amoebic dysentery, E. coli, coliform bacteria, streptococcus, and salmonella by providing them drinkable water for more than seven years and more. The project's trusted community leaders who are primarily locals and members of the indigenous people population have ensured the proper maintenance and the sustainability for a functional system that enable those communities to have a clean water and safe water backed up with my own contingency plan as the project head of the Project Nanum. The project is now serving more than 50 families across 424 kilometers in three different municipalities, and I'm currently working for its further implementation to far-flung ETA communities for the Project Nanum's Phase 2. My only message is that we, the youth, through scouting, has the potential to make this impact in our communities making an impact locally, and making a bigger impact globally. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other people at some other time. We are the change that we seek for, and we are the change that we are all have been waiting for. We are our own potential, and by this, through the scouting movement, we are fueled up to reach our goal. Lastly, I'm Raymond Romeo C. Guzman from the Philippines, and hereby congratulating all the finalists of the MOP Hero Award. Thank you and God bless. What an amazing project, Raymond. It's now time for our first panel of this celebration. And for that, I will invite our moderator and MOP Hero, Nadine Shili. Thank you, Colleen and Mohan. My name is Nadine, and I have the pleasure to moderate this amazing panel with our MOP heroes, Fefer Nauti from Indonesia, Marilyn Sirakionia from Armenia, Travelers Between Letters from Colombia, Ivi Aki from Kenya, Bianca Pirvalesco from Romania, and last but not least, Nora Adli from Saudi Arabia. Welcome all. Let's start with Fefer. When Fekhar witnessed the severity of large storage in uh, Indonesia amidst the, the pandemic, he decided to initiate the Scout Blood Donors Project in 2020 that promoted a social media campaign to both raise awareness and encourage blood donations to save lives. The team of volunteers led the campaign, reaching tens of thousands of people through their online videos and explain, extending the project to other provinces. Fekhar. Why do you think it's important for young people to do the service uh, actions and serve their communities? Uh, okay, thank you. A friend in need is a friend indeed. 
Remember this quote, a scout is a friend to other. We are an inseparable part as good member of our respective communities. Now our community suffer from the pandemic. This is the best time for us to prove and render our service to others, not only for our personal growth, but also for the benefit of our community. In the case of my project, one single donation saved life, simple account, collective action, working hand in hand together, we will recover and grow stronger after the pandemic. Thank you so much, Fehern. I now welcome Rengi so, from yes, our uh, community. That's it. So Mary has focused her work in supporting refugees displaced by the borders conflict with food and clothing during the COVID-19 pandemic. Why do you think, why, why did you focus your project on supporting refugees? Okay, uh, first of all, it was uh, the biggest strategy of the year, the war that started in our country. So uh, the victims that left after the war, they were unemployed, they didn't have houses to live. So it was the smallest uh, help that we could provide to them. Also, um, me as a woman couldn't join to war, but it was my way to be in the world and to participate in that big work. Thank you. Our next two are a team of travelers between letters from Colombia who have been empowering children with knowledge about children's rights to foster resilient communities. Welcome. Why did you learn? What did you learn from uh, doing your project? Eh, bueno, durante el desarrollo de nuestro proyecto, nosotros eh, aprendimos a conocer aún más a las comunidades con las cuales trabajamos, permitiéndonos de esta manera identificar sus necesidades y encaminar el proyecto en pro de su desarrollo. De igual manera, hemos aprendido desde la diversidad que existe en el equipo de trabajo, cómo cada uno puede aportar desde sus conocimientos para el fortalecimiento del proyecto, puesto que el trabajo en equipo para nosotros es muy importante, eh, porque de él depende que el proyecto continúe su camino También hemos aprendido la importancia de llevar proyectos como viajeros entre letras a comunidades vulnerables porque hemos logrado impactar positivamente a través de la lectura con todos los sentidos a la vida de niñas, niños y adolescentes, así como la de sus familias, logrando generar aprendizajes significativos acerca de la importancia de trabajar promoviendo los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible a partir de pequeñas acciones porque todos podemos contribuir al cumplimiento de ellos y por ende la construcción de un mundo mejor. That's so inspiring. A better world. Yeah, thank you again. Evie, you are next. You have played a leading role in Jinko, a project that aims to combat teen pregnancies in Kenya. Your scout group worked on empowering girls aged between 15 and 20 to raise their awareness, awareness with, about sexual and reproductive health, education, and giving guidance to teen mothers. Tuki started the project in Tiberia slum and worked with 57 pregnant teens and mothers. Why do you think your project is important and so impactful? So all of us have suffered the impact of COVID-19. And for me, I've been moved by the plight of the young girls, seeing them dropping out of school and uh, seeing them getting pregnant. As a scout and a messenger of peace, I believe I need to take action. And that is why I created Ginkgo. Ginkgo is an initiative that was formed during this COVID-19 pandemic. It is a response to the rampant increase in teen pregnancies that we have witnessed during this pandemic. At the heart of Ginkgo, we have the Swahili proverb that says, Kuvunjika kwa mwiko, sio musho opishi. This means that just because the cooking stick is broken, it doesn't mean that you should stop cooking. You pick another one and you keep going. So this project seeks to build resilience um, among the teen mothers. In this, we have created a support group with the teen mothers and also a safe space for them to introspect, to receive mental health guidance, trainings on sexual and reproductive health, and discuss about parenting as they receive advice to pursue education despite the hiccup that they have faced. 
So far, we have been able to work with 50, 17 mothers, of which 10 have successfully gone back to school. In addition, we have developed a guidebook uh, called Blossom Through Teenagehood that focuses on three main areas, reproductive health and sex education, personal development, and entrepreneurial skill development. All this is intended to combat teen pregnancies and promote the holistic development of the teenagers. Thank you. Ivy, what an exceptional impact. Thank you so much. Bianca from Romania led a project that addressed the impacts of climate change. Her and her group reached over 200 children, youth and community members in activities, organizing and committing to concrete solutions to do better for the planet. What would you tell to other young people to inspire them to act at their local community? Um, thank you, Nadine, for the question. So based on our experience, I have some advices. Um, first of all, be sure of what the community needs. Find a real problem and believe in yourself that you can make a difference. Um, find people with whom you share the same values and who can join your cause, thus becoming your common cause. The idea that you can rely on a team or someone is an important pillar in the work you have undertaken. You get energy, courage, and motivation for, from a team. Ask for help. Do not carry everything on your shoulders. There are a lot of people who are willing to help and contribute. Find yourself a mentor or someone that you could trust to be there in times of need. And take care of yourself. I know that you took a big responsibility and want to do great things, but do not forget about yourself in the process. Take breaks. If you struggle with something, be patient with yourself. Everything has a solution. And my last tip would be that you can do it. If you want it, do it. If you believe in it, do it. So I wish you all the best and good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bianca, for your practical advice. Last but not least, in this amazing panel discussion, I welcome Nora, who focused on building houses for people living in unprivileged communities with the support of a network of volunteers. So my question is to Nora, what does it mean for you to be selected as MOP hero? Okay. First of all, I'm very proud of being in the United States of America this year. وفخورة أيضا بتمثيلي الوطني المملكة العربية السعودية طبعا فكرة التراميم هي تهدف لتوفير المنزل الآمن للأسرة المتعففة الغير قادرة على امتلاك منزل جديد أنا سأتكلم عن تأثير العمل التطوعي على شخصيتي بشكل عام وهذا باعتباري أنه أفضل شيء أحصل عليه لأنه قد لا يكون موجود في, في الأعمال الأخرى حيث أني لمست التغيير العمل التطوعي أيضا وهبني سعادة وراحة لا توصف خاصة في التراميم وهو يعني من خلال تواصلي مع مع الأسر المتعففة من خلال توفير منازل آمنة لهم كان كان شعور جدا مختلف وجميل أنا جدا فخورة أنني يعني حصلت لي الفرصة في في توصيل فكرتي للعالم تقريبا أعتبر هذا شيء جيد لأنه سيعطيني دافع للاستمرارية ولتغيير العالم سيكون لي يد بتغيير العالم بشكل أفضل أتمنى أنني وضعت أثر ولو بسيط لأي شخص كان وتقريبا هذا كل ما لدي الآن وشكرا نورا thank you so much for your amazing answer and also thank you so much to all panelists and people watching us. And now back to our hosts. A huge round of applause to Nadine and our MLP heroes, Fakir Magri, travels between letters uh, Evie, Bianca, and Nora. Now we have Gainet Abmasu Bekele representing the Gambele Scots group. 
They have been working with South Sudanese refugees in Ethiopia and integrating them into scouting as a means to build their resilience and introduce the youth to life skill that scouting offers. የማስተማር የጋምቤላ ክልል ስካውት ካውንስል 3 ዙር ያስቬዛ የወር አስቬዛ የሚያክል ያስቬዛ ደላን አድርገናል በዛም ፕሮግራም መገኘት ያልተጀ ያልቻሉ አቅመደቃሞች ሲኖሩ እነሱ እቤት ለቤት ድረስ በመዞር ያንን የወር አስቬዛ ለማደር ይችላል ይህንን በማድረግ ኮቪድን በተቻለ መጠን ለመከላከል እየጣርን እንገኛለን ሌላ ደግሞ በጋምቤላ ክልል ስካውት ካውንስል ሰራቸው ከሚባሉ ዋነኛና ግንባር ቀደሙ የሰላም ግንባታ ኮለት የማይክ ባቡ የበረሰብ አካላ የስካውት ትምህርት በማሰልጣን አንድ ቀን የሰላም ካምፕ በማለስ ሰጀመን እርስ በርስ እንዲዋደዱና መግባባታቸው የበለጠ አብሮነታቸው እንዲሰፋ የተቻለን ሁሉ አድርገናል እና አመርክ ውጤትም አንተታ የስካውት ካውንስሉ አባላት ስካውቶች እንደዚሁ የሁለቱን የሁለቱን በርስ በተር አባላት ያሉ ሲሆኑ እነሱ ለማህበረሰቡ ትምህርት ሆኖ የሚያገለግሉበት ሁኔታ ነው ያለ ዋው this is amazing i can't stop feeling inspired and we are only halfway we have some more heroes telling us their projects do who do we have next well Next in our celebration we have Sam and Charlie they were part of a group of young people who worked an action around mental health in their communities in the UK during COVID-19 they partnered with churches and to focus on in their action on mental health disability environmental action and more reaching million online through their campaign and building the capacity of young people to support their community We are a group of 10 young people who came together because we are passionate about making an impact in our communities and want to ensure other young people have the opportunity. We come together from across the UK to work to help all young people aged 4 to 25 make a social impact in their local communities on a wide range of issues throughout our time working together. In 2018, we selected and started working with nine national charities on six important social issues. that we felt were important to young people across the UK with a focus on multiple SDGs we were protecting the environment with WWF ending homelessness with crisis and the Simon community better mental health for all with mind sam h and inspire northern ireland supporting refugees and displaced children with save the children understanding disabilities with the national autistic society and kindness in every community with the british red cross building upon best practice within the movement we created a comprehensive program of activities to help young people to understand these social issues and make meaningful social impact through a five stage program we had launched the first two stages before march 2020 with thousands of young people planning to take action soon However, before they could take action, coronavirus hit. Unfortunately, not many groups have been able to take their action so far. However, following our successful relaunch, 1,563 groups have registered to take action over the coming year, which we are all very excited to see come together. During COVID-19, we, like many others, had our lives changed by the pandemic. Most of us were isolating at home. but others were on the front line as student paramedics and working in retail stores. We wanted to do more. As a group, we wanted to respond to issues within our communities. 
focusing on an issue which affects each and every one of us, mental health. This is a social issue we were already working towards and also one that was becoming ever more important in all of our communities. Our work on this began with the hashtag 343, where we asked the public to share three things they were doing to support their mental health and tag three others to promote the project. 343 three worked towards SDG goal number three. Hashtag 343 three gained over 10 million Twitter impressions with leading politicians, business people and civic society getting involved from all over the world. Our final lockdown project looked at SDGs 3 and 4 again on mental health, but this time on the taboo that was preventing young people from talking to their friends and family about their mental health. Young people told us that they wanted to support their friends with their mental well-being, but they simply didn't have the skills, training or support to do so. From this challenge, Wellbeing Champions was created to train young people in peer support, and there are now over 4,000 Wellbeing Champions active in their communities, promoting better mental health and supporting those around them. This campaign was timed to launch at the same time as millions of young people across the UK returned to school in person for the first time in months. This was an extremely challenging time for many young people's mental well-being, and we are so proud to have provided the support that we did to young people across the UK and sending a positive message about mental health. Thank you to the UK uh, Community Impact Group. I don't know about you, but I'm so impressed with all what we're seeing and there's so much more to come. It's now time to welcome Rohi Rasba that will moderate our next panel discussion with five of our new MOP heroes. Thank you, Moat and Polly. Hey, everyone. My name is Ruhi. I'm from Bangladesh. I'm super happy to moderate the second panel of today's celebration with these amazing heroes. Before that, I want to thank everyone watching the celebration. And I thank and welcome our heroes present here today. I welcome Sabin Karmacharya from Nepal, Pakum Kofi from Cote d'Ivoire, Empenia's team from Venezuela, Joanna Bessler from Portugal, and Group Krumbalia El Medina from Tunisia. Welcome everyone. With economic activity slowing down during the pandemic, Sabine and his scout group realized the devastating impact this has on people who depend on a daily wage to live. Together, they created a project to provide basic needs and hot meals to thousands of people across seven states in Nepal. They reached over 600,000 people with food and necessities in one year. Sabine, how did, you, how did scouting contribute to your development? So as being an in, uh, being a inseparable part uh, of scout since 14 years, um, I have learned um, many amazing uh, hard and soft skills, which um, helped me to flourish myself in this project. So as a scout, uh, my scouting network all over Nepal helped me to launch program in different district. Um, we reached 41 district uh, uh, of 77 district in Nepal, uh, where the scouting network that, uh, uh, that uh, I have uh, helped me to run the program in each district smoothly. And most of the scout uh, assisted our campaign as volunteers. Um, so in this 14 years of scouting, um, it always taught me to be prepared anytime with safety measures um, with uh, the circumstances. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sabine, for sharing. Passing now to Pakum, who has developed dialogue skills in government officers in Cote d'Ivoire, supporting the electoral process to prevent conflicts and political unrest during electoral processes. Pakum. What did you learn from doing your project? So I'm trying to French. Alors, savez-vous que la plupart des élections en Afrique finissent euh, par des crises post-électorales? Autrefois, la Côte d'Ivoire, durant l'année 2010-2011, a traversé une crise post-électorale qui était la plus sombre de, de, ses, de son histoire. 
cette crise a coûté la vie à plusieurs personnes, des dommages, il y a eu un impact très négatif sur la communauté. Et durant l'approche de ces nouvelles élections, nous voyons ces mêmes tendeurs au niveau de notre communauté. Fort de ne point revivre euh, cette même situation dans notre pays, le but pour nous, à travers ce projet, était d'être à proximité de la population pour une sensibilisation sur les élections à venir et aussi de former les jeunes comme des médiateurs de paix et des ambassadeurs. Euh, à travers cette caravane, nous avons ciblé certaines villes qui ont été les plus touchées lors de cette dernière crise, les sensibiliser et mettre en place un système d'arbre à pala, chez nous qui signifie euh, un espace de règlement de conflit qui sera géré par ces jeunes médiateurs de paix formés de la localité. Nous avons, par la création du système d'arbre à pala, euh, amené les jeunes des groupes ethniques les religions et même les dirigeants politiques de la localité à pouvoir accepter l'opinion de l'autre et de dialoguer sans arriver au conflit. Nous avons aussi installé des pancartes dans la ville qui véhiculaient des messages de paix pour captiver l'attention de la population. Fako, that's amazing. Your story is a great example of scouts are contributing to creating a culture of peace. Our next panelists, Ernedi and Soleil, have been working since 2019 in their community to raise awareness and make the community more inclusive to people with hearing impairment. Among their activities, scouts were teaching sign language to community members to ease communication and dialogue for everyone. So guys, tell us, what does it mean for you to be selected as a MLP hero? Uh significa totalmente un compromiso. Es un compromiso que se intensifica un poco más con el mundo, con nuestro país, con mi entorno local, con la comunidad sorda y con todos aquellos que de alguna manera han sido desfavorecidos a través del tiempo por padecer sobre esta condición. Eh, además, eh, esto también en ese mismo sentido Nos gusta seguir eh, involucrándonos y seguir concientizando para formar un mundo mejor. Ser héroe, mensajeros de la paz, es una responsabilidad más de servicio, es más como por amor al prójimo, de ser portadores de otras voces y de seguir sumando acciones que nos permitan construir un mundo mejor con mucha motivación y trabajo en equipo, siendo totalmente inspirador. That is so impactful. Thank you for making our movement more inclusive and beautiful. Now, Joanna leads a team of young people with goal to ensure that all scouts in Portugal are familiar about the sustainable development goals and engaging in actions to achieve Agenda 2030. The team facilitated 100 sessions and reached 20,000 young people across the country. Why is it so important for young people to do service actions? Hi, my name is Joanna and my project aims to mobilize and engage scouts in Portugal to help with implementing the Agenda 2030 across the whole country. Um, this project was launched in 2018 under the name of Compromise 2030. And until now, me and the team I coordinate with seven brilliant young people uh, have developed a series of, as you were saying, uh, more than 100 sessions on SDGs, reaching directly more than 20,000 scouts and also external entities. Uh, we've written articles every month read by more than 14,000 scouts. Uh, we launched the website on SDGs for Portuguese scouts. We also curated a museum exhibition, Scouts in the SDGs, and we developed and disseminated a kit for local groups and scout centers towards SDGs, created a national badge on SDGs, and we managed to get many of these initiatives externally financed and in partnership actually with United Nations Portugal. Joanna, what an amazing mobilization. It makes it easier to contribute to the SDGs and create a positive impact. Last but not least, I have with me the group from Balia El Medina who were incredible in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic by distributing food during Ramadan, distributing of masks and sanitizers, hand-washing campaigns, they have made a positive impact in their communities. 
what would you tell other young people to inspire them to act in their communities? Well, every young person should act in his community. And by time you will discover that you're not doing it for your country as much as you're doing it for yourself and for your well-being. So you will be surprised of how many things you're capable of personally. And this project, I saw the good in people. Uh, I, I learned how to be grateful again for everything and anything. So I've learned that hope allows us to realize that any problem we encounter along our journey is only temporary. It enables us to feel the belief that our future will be blooming. So you're the hope to your country. You're young, invest in your time, your energy, get, it, get up because time passes by. The second child looks into your eyes and touches you with his tiny hands, a spark will grow into your heart. And believe me, nothing can turn it off. You'll keep looking at, looking up after that. So we have a Tunisian proverb that gets me every time. One hand doesn't clap. So no one can clap with one hand. And I, Group Grambilia and Dina, can't clap with one hand. So be the other hand and let's clap together. Thank you. Keep inspiring, keep motivating, and keep making this world a better place. Thank you so much to all panelists. Thank you to our viewers who have been with us throughout the whole session. And thank you to all people working in the background. Back to you, Pauline and Moat. Thank you so much, Sabine, as Pakam and Esena's team, Joanna and group of Gramalia and Medina, and our incredible moderator, moderator Ruhi. We have one last story to share with you today. Mariana has been building processes to ensure a more inclusive world for people with disabilities in Mexico. The project Hand by Hands has been providing 3D printed uplift prosthetic devices since February 2019. And to this day, they continue changing lives. Ready to see her story? Sabías que tan solo en México son más de 170 mil personas al año las que necesitan de una prótesis de miembro superior y que aproximadamente el 80% de ellas no cuenta con una? Mi nombre es Mariana Lizaldecano, tengo 23 años, soy estudiante de ingeniería biomédica y soy scout en mi país, México. Saber que el 80% de personas que necesitaban de una prótesis no tenían el acceso a una me sorprendió y descubrí los tres principales motivos. El primero, el factor económico. En México una prótesis puede llegar a costar hasta 50 mil dólares. El segundo, el factor psicológico. Pasar de verte con una mano real, ahora verte con una mano robótica, puede llegar a ser un choque emocional demasiado grande. Y por último, el factor biológico. Algunas personas nacen con alguna malformación congénita que les impide utilizar una prótesis. Recordando esto y sabiendo que podía contribuir con mi equipo y con mis conocimientos, fue que en 2019, junto con mi amigo Saúl Hernández, fundamos Hand by Hands, proyecto con el cual tendremos la oportunidad de democratizar el acceso a esta tecnología de asistencia médica. Sabíamos que no iba a ser tarea fácil. Investigamos las necesidades del país. Aprendimos cosas más allá de lo que nos enseñan en la escuela. Tuvimos que aprender y capacitarnos sobre los softwares que íbamos a utilizar y logramos conseguir un apoyo financiero para comprar los insumos para elaborar las prótesis. Después de aproximadamente unos cinco meses, elaboramos nuestros primeros prototipos, los cuales fueron entregados a personas que nos dieron su retroalimentación para saber cómo mejorar su experiencia, a fin de tener nuestros diseños definitivos. En el camino, identificamos la necesidad de trabajar con un modelo biopsicosocial, ya que reconocimos que nuestra labor debía tener un impacto sostenible en el tiempo. Ahora, no solo brindamos el acceso a prótesis personalizadas con impresión 3D de bajo costo, sino que además brindamos un acompañamiento psicológico gratuito al beneficiario como a su núcleo familiar cercano durante todo el proceso. Al día de hoy hemos logrado cambiar la experiencia de vida de más de 160 personas de diferentes estados del país 
echándoles la mano para que ahora puedan lanzar la pelota con su familia. Permitirle a un padre y a su hija chocar la mano por primera vez. Ver cómo un padre se convierte en el superhéroe de sus hijos por ahora utilizar una prótesis como Iron Man. Permitirle a un joven dejar de tener miedo de mostrar su mano en público y ahora sentirse orgulloso de ser quien es. Y hasta permitirle a un joven rascarse el brazo que antes no podía. Estas historias también nos han cambiado la vida a nosotros. Ahora son parte de nosotros. Les amamos, les honramos y estamos dispuestos a continuar dedicando de nuestro tiempo, conocimiento y esfuerzo para hacer de su mundo un lugar mejor de como lo encontramos. Hoy, Hand by Hands es el inicio de un emprendimiento social que me ha enseñado que todos y cada uno de nosotros somos capaces de convertirnos en mensajeros de la paz desde aquello que conocemos y que nos apasiona hacer. Creo firmemente que si continuamente trabajamos por lograr nuestros sueños, estando en el lugar correcto, siempre encontraremos personas dispuestas a amar y servir. I hope that all of you watching us today can feel the power of positive change. Bees, start with me, start with you, and our communities and collaboration with others. And these 25 young people are a great example for that. With project on environment, peace building, life skill, health and well-being, and COVID-19 response, These young and resilient young people show us how we can contribute to a better world. Let's take a moment to recognize all of them now. Congratulations to the 25 MOP here of 2020 and 21 generation. We are approaching to the end of our celebration, but we have one final special guest. That's right. We have with us today Andy Chapman, the chairperson of the World Scout Committee, to give us some final remarks. Andy, welcome to the Messengers of Peace uh, Hero Awards virtual stage. Thank you, Pauline and Moath. I'm really happy to be here with you today for this Messengers of Peace celebration. The Messengers of Peace Heroes Award was first established in 2012 to recognize exceptional scouts and volunteers who are working to create a better world. The award acknowledges and recognizes the extraordinary service of young people and their outstanding contributions to peace and sustainable development through community-based projects. Each year, Messengers of Peace heroes are honored with this award in a ceremony like this one to inspire other young people to serve their communities 
for lasting impact. This year, we received over 900 nominations from 69 countries across our six scouting regions. After a thorough process, World Scouting has selected 25 young people as recipients of the Messengers of Peace Heroes Award. Today, we are here to celebrate those young leaders. Building peace and dialogue starts with all of us working together in a spirit of collaboration and positivity. As the chairperson of the World Scout Committee and a lifelong scout, I am so proud to see the incredible achievements and impact that these young people are making in their communities. I hope that you and other scouts are inspired by their efforts to create a positive change in the world. On behalf of World Scouting, congratulations to the 25 Messengers of Peace heroes being awarded in 2021. Congratulations. for joining us in celebrating the extraordinary efforts of these young people and the 10 years of Messengers of Peace. We cannot end the celebration without thanking all the adults and the National Scout Organization who supported the outstanding work of young people and the Scout Global Network. We would like also to thank Saudi Arabia for their support, which was fundamental for the immense success of the Messengers of Peace initiative. On behalf of the World Scout team, thank you. Last but not least, we also want to thank all the global, regional, and local partners who helped our young people achieve their goals and development and their delivering successful projects. Let's give a final round of applause to our Messengers of Peace heroes and remember to keep working towards achieving the sustainable development goals. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Goodbye.